Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to p -Tech Chemistry Channel. My name is Dr. On. In this tutorial video, I'll go through this 9701. This is for a very recent paper, June 2022. This is the correct paper 2 variant 2. I think in the other video tutorial, I did the incorrect one. That was paper 2 1. But this is the correct one, paper 2 variant 2 for the June 2022 9701 Cambridge International A level exam. In this first question, magnesium has a melting point of 650 degrees Celsius. This is way above room temperature. You will associate this as high melting point. Now this one has high electrical conductivity. So explain these properties. So this is plural and this has to be with respect to its structure as well as bonding. For two marks, first of all, you got to talk about the melting point. So magnesium is a metal. So the fact that it's a metal and it's also a metallic element, so it exists as an element. So what we can say really is magnesium has a giant metallic structure. So if I just write that down, magnesium has giant metallic uh, lattice structure. So I'm sure without a lattice, they'll be all right. It basically means that uh, the structure get repeated itself uh, in this three-dimensional network. So what happened then is with the high melting point, so melting, melting, uh, actually, let me think about this first. Yep, okay. So melting magnesium needs to break needs to break strong metallic bond and I'm going to specify what exactly is this metallic bond between so this metallic bond is between your uh, cations your metal cations and of course you become cations as you have a delocalized valence electron because you only delocalize your outermost shell electrons and that is a strong metallic bond between these two oppositely charged particles but it's between cations and your delocalized valence electron if i have to label it i would draw like my cations and then i would draw my uh, metal cations as well as my c of delocalized valence electrons so let me just move that a little bit to the side. So metal cations, we always have to draw a level diagram. This is your C of delocalized valence, meaning the outermost shell electrons. But I've only explained the first bit so far. Uh, I mean, there isn't really so much to discuss for the second bit. It's just that, you know, it has free electrons. So magnesium has free. Uh, well, basically, I can just say these, these outermost shell electrons, these valence electrons are free to move. Therefore, they can conduct. So basically, it's a continuation of uh, the idea on the structure previously. It has these uh, metal cations suspended in a sea of delocalized valence electrons that result in strong metallic bond between the oppositely charged particle. That's why you need to break the result in a high melting point. And this is uh, also the valence electrons are free to move and therefore they have high electrical conductivity as a metal. It's not enough to just say magnesium is a metal, therefore it can conduct. Nope, 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 nope. You have to go back to the metallic structure and think about the C of delocalized valence electrons that are free to move. Moving on to part B, when magnesium is heated in air, MgO is the major product. So smaller amounts of magnesium nitrite, that is because you have Mg2+, plus, two of them, and N3-, minus, uh, sorry, three of the Mg2+, plus, so that you will get six plus altogether and two of the entry minus so that you get minus six ionic compounds how you exchange the valency lowest common multiple primary school mathematics in order to balance out the charges so that the plus six cancel out the minus six there they want you to work out the magnesium uh, oxidation number so as i told you earlier already this is magnesium two plus in a compound group two metals form uh, group 2 cations exclusively and therefore all the group 2 metal they will have a plus 2 oxidation number when they form a compound nitrogen in there that comes from n3 minus so that one is definitely minus 3 as you can imagine if you think about the n3 minus nitrogen ion and then the magnesium ion the oxidation number of ion follows the charge of the ion so just like that you get one mark Identify the type of reaction which take place between magnesium and nitrogen. So I can say magnesium plus nitrogen gas in the A, of which your A has about 78% for dry air, and you get Mg3 
and 2. So I can balance my equation with 3 mg like that. So I can say very clearly this is magnesium 0 oxidation number. As an element, we look at this metal as an element. So as an element, the oxidation number of element is 0. And this goes to magnesium plus 2 and nitrogen minus 3. So identify the type of reaction. The type of reaction is called redox. And then explain your answer. I can say that magnesium 0 increases to magnesium plus 2 in Mg3N2. And then the second bit will be, they're pretty stingy here actually. So they want you to explain redox, not just one actually. So nitrogen 0, nitrogen 0 would have been, ah, I better explain myself better. Nitrogen 0 in N2 decreases to nitrogen minus 3, and this is in Mg3N2. So basically, going from magnesium 0 to magnesium zero, uh, plus 2, this one is going to be your oxidation, increase in oxidation number, and then nitrogen 0 going to nitrogen minus 3, there is a decrease in oxidation number, that is your reduction there. I don't think you'll get marks in there for the balance questions, but what will be quite nice is to actually explain both redox, both the oxidation, as well as the reduction is required to get the marks on explaining redox. Again, very, very stingy there. The next thing is defined enthalpy change of formation. This one is for two marks. They haven't mentioned standard in the questions, so I don't think you will get any marks if you mention standard conditions, although you wouldn't be penalized if you mention standard, but you don't get any additional mark for the standard conditions. So enthalpy of formations is this delta HF. Uh, perhaps I don't want to include the, the theta there. So this one is the enthalpy change. What is the process that is the important one? When you form one mole of a substance. So it's one mole of a substance. And this one mole of a substance is formed from its elements. It has to be formed from its elements. And then everything in their standard states. So everything has to be in their standard states and by right, we always say under standard conditions. I'm just going to complete the story by saying under standard condition. As I did mention earlier, you probably don't get any marks for specifying under standard conditions. But in other cases, you could be asked this, so you know, I'm just going to include it because it's actually part of our understanding on the standard enthalpy change of formation to do with forming one mole of a substance because when you have something kilojoule per mole, per mole of what? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Per mole of what? For formation is per mole, that means per one mole of the stuff being formed, the substance being formed from its elements, everything in standard states under standard conditions. Now they want you to work out the enthalpy of formations. Earlier I've written down an equation, but here we are specifically looking at enthalpy change of formation. So we must write the product first, and then this is forming solid ionic compound with a very high melting and boiling point. It's going to be a solid at room temperature and pressure. We form it from the element, which are magnesium, Mg, and nitrogen being diatomic molecule. We're going to balance our equation that is solid and gas. Now there's forming one mole of it, which means this is going to be the delta HF for this magnesium nitride Mg3N2. Now we are using excess nitrogen gas, so we are not going to use that for our calculation. So first of all, I guess we need to work out the mole of magnesium. So your predict table is no longer in the data booklet, instead it's at the, at the back of your question paper, because everything is now provided all in one. Um, question paper. So magnesium in your predict table will be 24.3 for the relative atomic mass. So 3.645 divided by 24.3, I get 0 0.15 mole. Now what do they want? They want enthalpy change of formation. They don't give you the unit, which is very, very devious of them, but we know it is in kilojoule per mole. As I did mention earlier, it is the enthalpy change for forming one mole of the substance. For forming one mole of the substance, you will get one mark for the units. I will imagine that. So this is for 0 0.15 mole of these being formed, you get 23.05 kilojoule. So here, hang on, hang on. That is the mole of magnesium, but it's not per mole of Mg3N2. So I need to work out the mole of Mg3N2. That is why this is worth three marks, right? So magnesium 
forms the magnesium nitride and the bit of formation is for the magnesium nitride it's not for the magnesium that reacted it's per one mole of the magnesium nitride that get formed so what is the mole of the magnesium nitride from the balance equation we get one is to three from the balance equation one mole of magnesium nitride comes from three mole of magnesium and this is equal to the actual mole of the magnesium nitride is to 0 0.15 mole so the actual mole of the magnesium nitride is going to be move that up there so 0 0.15 divided by 3 uh, what do i get actually so there's going to be a third of that i believe i get 0 0.05 mole but what do they want they want in kilojoule per mole right so you know enthalpy change of formations for the mg3n2 what is the amount of energy being released out they say release this is another thing release so that means this is an exothermic reaction exothermic reaction means delta h is less than zero it is negative so i need to put in the negative sign because this is now about enthalpy change it has sign value and unit so that is 23.05 kilojoule according to the question divided by the mole of the substance you are forming and that will be in kilojoule per mole now so quite devious this question actually so i get minus 461 exactly kilojoule per mole so sign value do not forget do not forget there is no unit given in the question so you have to provide the unit yourself and like that i would imagine that probably you get marks for the unit and the sign you get marks for doing the mole calculations and getting to the mole of the magnesium nitride that is actually formed instead of using this mole of magnesium based on the definition that just like that that's the end of that nine marks question